going on? What's going on, YouTube? Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking Auburn football. Go ahead and uh, woo, like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn here on YouTube. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. So how about that college football today, guys? A lot of teams, uh, ACC actually kicked off today. Got a chance to take a quick glance at the Notre Dame-Duke game. Kind of caught a glimpse of Florida State uh, and their game today versus Georgia Tech. So it was actually pretty um, pretty interesting to see uh, the crowds. I mean, you talk about a 17,000 uh, capacity crowd at Doak Campbell Stadium in Florida State. So it's kind of similar to a spring game. But you can see the players were clearly excited about being back on the field, being able to compete. And uh, we'll just see how it kind of goes from there pandemic-wise. I think this is great for uh, society. I think this is great for the players involved. They want to be out there. And it appears that, for the most part, that all precautions, all possible precautions are being followed. But once again, I want to talk about my man Bo Nix from the Auburn Tigers. We know yada yada, the five-star recruit from the state of Alabama, Pennsylvania Valley High School, garnished every award possible for a high school football player, uh, was coveted by some of the uh, top teams in America. Uh, I think because of his tie, his father was a quarterback at Auburn back in the early 90s, Patrick Nix. I think that the love and devotion for Auburn, definitely they're committed to Auburn. One of the highest rated five uh, recruits for Auburn and that I can remember. I don't know if Jason Campbell was rated as high, but and Cam Newton, of course, was a five-star recruit. But we're talking about right out of high school, um, Auburn being able to snag a guy that I think is actually a pretty good quarterback. SEC freshman of the year last year. Uh, threw about close to 60% of his passes, uh, com completed about 60% of his passes, and he w went on a long stint, uh, especially after the first uh, few games, where he didn't have a turnover. He really didn't hurt Auburn as far as turnovers go. go. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Now, Bo Nix, for one, I just, I, I mean, he's not getting any of, any accolades. I'm not going to say respect, um, because that's a matter of relativity. You feel me? So I just don't think he's getting, he's, I don't think he's getting the accolades that another quarterback would typically get based on being the SEC freshman of the year, based on pretretty much being in every game as a true freshman. One of the first, well, actually the first true freshman to start at Auburn since the mid forties. And I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm pulling the bias card on this one because I just don't think that another quarterback at another school, SEC freshman of the year coming back into his coming into his sophomore year. I just don't think that he's just kind of written off like he's a flop. I mean, you talk about a guy that, you know, won some big games, kept his team in some big games. One thing I like about Bo Nix and I was a harsh critic of Bo Nix during the season. And I did think that the game needed to kind of slow down for him. But one thing I do like about Bo Nix is he's not going to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to throw that crucial interception, kind of like what Jared Stidham did in the Tennessee game and in the SEC championship game. Um, late in the stretch, if you look at all the games he played late in the stretch, no turnovers, and he did – Whatever he could do to give his team the best possibility to win the football game. Maybe that, maybe you can call that playing it safe. Maybe you can call that, you know, just kind of keeping things close to the hip. But he wasn't going to do anything to cost his team. You cannot document and say that Bo Nix, as a true freshman, made those costly decisions, especially late in the game where the game is still in hand and he cost his team. He was a true freshman at Auburn, arguably one of the – most rigorous schedules in recent Auburn history. You talk about playing a handful of top 10 teams. You talk about a team in Oregon that he made some gutsy stuff happen. Actually beat a team that wound up being the Pac-12 champions. Arguably, Oregon doesn't lose that game to Arizona State. They're probably a college football playoff caliber team. 
in which Auburn overpowered, in my opinion, in the second half. So you look at the list. They even had a list where they talked about the prototypical SEC quarterback. Now, the fact that Bo Nix is not on the list is not a real big problem. The biggest problem is who's on the list. And instead of Bo Nix, you know, just look at it. Look at the list. You know, you got Kyle Trask. I mean, I think he's a good, uh, okay quarterback. Um, Did some great things, but he's not somebody that I'm just absolutely afraid of. Um, Bo Nix had a lot of issues with jailing with with trust as far as the offensive line goes and for good reason um having pretty much having to, to to function under a very inexperienced coordinator offensive coordinator in uh, kenny dillingham so i just want to know you know what what you guys think about this particular topic because when i look at the media outlets it just doesn't appear that bo nix is being given any level of formidable accolades that I think he kind of sort of is warranted at least given some preseason love. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to the SEC, some of the top five quarterbacks, I'm just not understanding how he's not on the list. Now, he is on the list of in some media outlets, but I don't get how he's not a cons- a consistent like your Kyle Trask and your um, Kellen Mons, you know what I'm saying? And then they had Jamie Newman on the list, and Jamie Newman is not even going to play this year. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Am I, you know, kind of overreacting? Do I, you know, am I am I advocating too hard for Bo? Um, am I being biased or whatever you want to say? Go ahead and like the video, man. Let's get this comment section popping. It's Saturday. It's the first. Power Five Saturday of the year. ACC has opened up college football in the Deep South and along the Atlantic Coast, and college football is back going. I want, I, I want, comment on anything. If you want to talk about the ACC and what you think about uh, North Carolina actually beating Syracuse thirty-one to six today, you look at the conference slate for Syracuse. I mean, for uh, North Carolina, and they. They could actually push the envelope all the way down into November in a, in a possible possible top top ten game against Notre Dame and push the envelope to be in the ACC championship game. Got a lot of stuff, good stuff going on there. So just tell me what you think about this. And uh, matter of fact, Amani Goodwin actually the Auburn commit, Auburn trying to hang on to him, the Auburn commit that just actually continues to light it up. It appears that he's gotten over that energy. I mean, that uh, injury, 200 yards. Yeah, just let me know what you think about this video, guys. Um, like I said before, like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Also, check out my fan page on Facebook. And uh, make sure you support the guys over at All About Auburn. And like I said before, it's always great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.